Good morning and welcome to Zion as we celebrate the third Sunday after Pentecost. We are thankful that you are able to join us in worship this week and we pray that this service brings you comfort, peace and hope. Zion is fortunate to be made up of a strong community of Christians who are faithful in sharing their time, talents, gifts and prayers. Together we have helped people in our community and throughout the world. We especially thank the volunteers of Street Soldiers, the Three Churches Care Giving Ministry, and all the missions that Zion, Emmanuel, and Trinity Lutheran Churches of Schenectady support, supporting within our church, within our community, and throughout the world. We are God's people, together as one, doing his work. Thank you, and God bless you. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the Word was life, and the life was the light of all people. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, full of grace and truth. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our loving Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And hear God's forgiveness for you. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. And therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We shall read from Psalm 91, where verses 1 through 10 are known as, My Refuge and My Fortress. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, your dwelling place the most high, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. And the first reading is from Isaiah chapter 35. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. 
Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Our epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel is from John chapter 16, verses 16 through 24. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you're asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, a little while and you will not see me, and again, a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful but your sorrow will turn to joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. In that day you will ask nothing of me, Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So today, I want to talk to you about the difference between happiness and joy, okay? So, so there's a, a little bit of a difference between these two things, and, and I'm, I'm going to try my best to explain it. So I like to play video games. I, I, I like playing video games with my son, Micah, and my daughter, Ella. And so when we get a new video game, It's a lot of fun, and we're really happy that we get to play these games together. And we'll 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 play for for hours and hours and hours. But then at some point, the game gets old, right? I'm I'm sure there are toys you have, or maybe games that you have that you used to love to play with or play, and and now now it's now they're just old, and they're they're kind of boring. They don't make you as happy anymore. See, that's the thing with happiness. Happy is a feeling. Happy is, is just something that, 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 that kind of comes for a short amount of time, but it can fade away. But joy, joy is different. You see, I have joy when I'm with my children. My children, Micah and Ella, they bring me joy. And this is a feeling, this is something that goes through my life every single day, whether we're playing video games or not, whether, whether we're just sitting around the dinner table and talking, or whether, whether, you know, Micah, who's off at college, even though he's a long ways away, he still brings me joy because he's my son, because of the relationship. The joy of being a dad, the joy of my children never goes away. Unlike the video game and the happiness that goes away. See, that's the difference between happiness and joy. And God, God wants us to have joy. Sure, He wants you to be happy. He gives us happiness. But we have the same thing that my kids and I have, which is this relationship with God that that no matter how far away God is, no matter how, how far away sometimes he might feel, that joy, that relationship with God is right there. It's always there, no matter what. So I want you to think about today. As you go out and you play and you're, you're feeling happy, happy, happy goes away. But where happiness comes from, joy 
The joy that you and I have knowing that God is our Father and He loves us very much and that Jesus died on the cross for us to show us how much He loves us, that joy, that joy never goes away. So I want you to walk in that joy not only today, but every day, knowing that God loves you as His child that much. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, through His Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On July 17, 1955, the doors to a place that's called the happiest place on earth were opened. Disney World, a land where you are transported from your age, whatever age that is, to childhood, a magical world of awe, wonder, inspiration, and imagination. And it all came from the imagination of just one man, Walt Disney himself. When Walt Disney was talking about his magical kingdom, he said this. He said, everybody in the world was once a child, so in planning, we don't think of grown-ups And we don't think of children, but just of that fine, clean, unspoiled spot down deep in every one of us that maybe the world has made us forget. And that's exactly what the Disney parks do. They transport us, those of us who have maybe forgotten the joy of childhood, back to that place of pure happiness. But I bet you didn't know this, but there are rules to the happiness at the happiest place on earth. What what rules, you might ask? Well, these are rules to make sure that, that your happiness isn't interrupted by anything, that the magic of the magic kingdom isn't ruined by something coming in and breaking the spell. Rules like Every single piece of trash has to be picked up because trash is not magical. So Disney employees have to walk by. If they see a piece of trash, they have to walk by and pick it up. But they can't just pick it up in any old way. No, they're taught the Disney swoop and scoop where they walk by in a single motion and fluidly swoop down, scoop up the piece of trash All to make sure that no attention is drawn to the fact that something was out of place in the Magic Kingdom. A few of the other rules that the Disney employees have to follow to make sure your happiness is maximized. Staff cannot use social media or their phones at any time while in the park. They cannot eat while they're on the job because obviously princes and princesses don't eat, right? They can't, use, they can't wear sunglasses if they're talking to you as a guest. And they have to be on a first name basis with you. So all of their name badges have their first name so that you can call them that and you feel like you're a part of the family. But my favorite rule of all is the fact that there are words that you can't use at Disneyland or Disney World. Now, of course, we're not talking about Bad words, you can't do those for sure. No, no, there are words that would break the magic spell. Words like vomit. Yeah, if 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 someone is riding Space Mountain and their lunch makes a second appearance, the Disney employees cannot say vomit. They have to say code V. And there are some other words that they can't use, like trash, cleanup. Again, code T, code C. They have a code P and a code U, but I'm only going to let you guess at what those are. You see, every rule, every guideline in the Disney parks are meant to ensure that the magic and the happiness for you as their guest is never ruined, never broken. But what if I told you that the Disney magic and the happiness that you feel there are only a shadow, a picture of another kingdom? 
Not a kingdom based on make-believe, but a, a real, visible, tangible kingdom that you can walk in every single day. It's God's kingdom of joy. See, God created and imagined a kingdom of joy for you. Just like Disney World, God created this world from his imagination. And the, and the kingdom that he envisioned for you was to be a place of unending, uninterrupted joy. Just like Walt Disney, God created his kingdom, this kingdom, from a place of pure joy. God created because he enjoys creating. Everything you see, everything he made, including you, comes from a place of pure joy because that's exactly who God is. He is a God of pure joy. Not happiness, not a feeling, but a deep, all-permeating, all-encompassing joy that's woven into every star, every mountain, every lake, every tree, every atom of creation. But some people find this hard to believe. They find it hard to believe because they think that God is just there to be a killjoy. Someone who, who steals all our fun by giving us these rules to live by. But you don't think that the people at Disney are trying to ruin your fun by having those rules about happiness, do you? No, in fact, you're thankful that they have that they've thought through every part of your experience in order to maximize the happiness that you feel while you're there at a Disney park. In the exact same way, there are things that we have brought into God's perfect kingdom of joy that actually would steal and ruin our joy. It's the sin that litters our lives and our world that ruins God's perfect vision of his kingdom for us. So, just like when you enter the Disney parks, there are some guidelines that God would like us to follow to take away the ugliness, to make sure that the things that would ruin our joy are not part of our everyday experience. Just like at Disney, in God's magic kingdom of joy, we're to take care of the environment around us. Why? Because a ruined environment is not enjoyable. If you can't go and swim in a lake because it's polluted, that's not any fun. If you can't go fishing and enjoy a river, that's not good. So God has asked us to take care of the world around us because a ruined and destroyed environment would steal and minimize our joy. And just like at Disney, God makes sure that we are on a first name basis with him. He doesn't want anything to come between us as we communicate. So God calls us. He called you by your first name. He knows you that well. He wants you to know that you are a special guest in his kingdom of joy. And then he asks you to, he asks you to call him by his first name as well. Father. All to increase our joy. And again, just like at Disney, there are certain words that we aren't supposed to use in God's kingdom. I'm not talking about bad words. That, that, of course, we're not supposed to use those. No, no, we're not supposed to use words of anger or words that divide us. We're not supposed to use words that cut other people down or words that hurt them. We're not supposed to use words that demean or dehumanize another person. All, because, all of these words have no place in God's kingdom. All they do is ruin the experience for others and in the end, for us. Because we've pushed someone away and we don't get to enjoy their friendship. You see, God is not a killjoy trying to stop your fun no, he, like the Disney parks, he is trying to make sure that anything that could come and steal your joy in your life is kept far away from you. So that your experience every day is as joy-filled as possible. But there is one thing that is unavoidable at both Disney World and in God's kingdom. Suffering. Suffering at Disney, you might say? Of course. 
standing in line is suffering, right? Four hours sometimes to go and see an attraction or get on a ride, and your kids are sitting there saying, how much longer? Your feet are killing you. You've got to go to the bathroom, but you can't leave the spot. You're hungry. You are suffering. But those lines are just something that you have to suffer through at Disney. Suffering is something that we experience in our world as well. Unfortunately, our suffering is much worse and much longer than just standing in a line. People suffer through hunger, depression, racism, and poverty. We have to suffer through war and violence and abuse. We suffer because of disease and death. And just like at Disney, sometimes there's just no way around it. But Disney and God have come up with an ingenious way to help us through our suffering. Bring hope and joy right into it. At Disney theme parks, guests who are standing in line are given hope, real hope, by these signs that they put every so often to tell you how long it is until you get to ride the ride. Every time you see that hope and that number getting smaller, or every time you see that sign and that number getting smaller, your hope grows because you know the happiness that you're waiting for is almost there. It's just a little while longer. And then, then if there's a really long line, Disney sends out extra characters to come and interact with the people who are standing there and suffering. They take pictures, they talk, they bring joy into the suffering line. God's plan for when we suffer is exactly the same, hope and joy. God gives us hope by reminding us that this current broken world is going to come to an end. A day is coming and coming soon when injustice and division and violence and death will come to an end. As Jesus said to you today, in a little while you will no longer see me, and then in a little while you will see me again. A little while. It's just a little longer. Hold on. Have hope. And then God sent Jesus into the midst of our suffering as well. Jesus came to earth and walked among us. He talked to us. He brought us God's joy. God's joy itself walked among us and showed us what his perfect vision for us is all about. The lame made to walk, the deaf made to hear, the dead are raised, people from all walks of life being brought together in his church. But more than just walking and talking, Jesus, as the Bible says, for the joy laid before him died on the cross to restore us to God's perfect kingdom and take down all the barriers to joy in our lives, sin, death, and the power of evil over us and over our world, all of them taken and removed by Jesus so that all is left for us in God's kingdom is the joy he wanted for us from the beginning. But God sent someone else to walk with us as well. He sent his spirit. His spirit of joy to go with us so that no matter what, no matter what we are facing, no matter what we are going through, we get to walk in God's joy every day. And that's exactly what we do. When we walk in step with the Holy Spirit, we walk in joy. The perfect joy that God imagined for us from the beginning. When we're with our friends, we get to enjoy a relationship, and that's God's gift to us. When we experience something new and exhilarating, the birth of a child, an exciting ride on a motorcycle, learning a new skill, that is God's gift of joy to you in his kingdom. When we're content with what we have, we have the joy of knowing that God gives us exactly what we need when we need it. When you feel satisfaction for a job well done, whether it's because you're taking care of your yard and now you get a barbecue in it, or it's a job well done at work, that is God's gift of joy to you, letting you know that you are doing exactly what he has called you to do. 
And when you overcome a temptation, when you overcome an addiction, when you overcome a sin that has been hounding you for a while, God gives you the joy of triumph, the joy of knowing that with God, nothing is impossible, but all things are possible. As Isaiah said today, this joy that God offers us is a joy without end. And then Jesus reminded us that God wants our joy to be full. That's all because when God imagined this world, this kingdom that he gave to us, he did it out of joy and for your enjoyment. Every last detail, every second of every day, all of it created and imagined for you so that you could experience God's magic kingdom of joy. Never ending, all encompassing joy. And so if you want to experience this real, unending, unimaginable joy every day, walk in the spirit. Walk in God's spirit of joy. I mean, just look around. You are in God's magic kingdom right now. A magic kingdom that never closes, never has rain days, and in a kingdom that never comes to an end. And the best part is, when you come to God's magic kingdom, when you walk in step with the Spirit, it doesn't cost you a thing. Unlike another kingdom that costs you an arm and a leg. And you didn't even have to stand in line to get here. That's all because God's kingdom is free. Because joy, real joy, God's joy for you is his free gift to you when you walk in step with the Spirit. Amen.
I'll share with you now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray now for the people of God and for all people according to their needs. For the church and her witness of hope to the world that in every city, village, and home across the globe, the voice of the Lord may be heard by the faithful preaching of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For our congregation and our mission, for the ability to meet the needs that arise to do the work God has given us. God, grant your blessings to Pastor Matt, Pastor Chip, Bishop Derek, our supporting pastors and their families who guide us faithfully so that we can be strengthened by your word to live a Christian life. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor in the fields of the Lord today, and for the Lord to raise up laborers for his harvest fields, that their work may be blessed, and that they may be protected and defended against the enemies of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who live under the flag of our nation, for those who govern this country, and for the causes of peace and justice, that we may all be given grace and freedom to serve the Lord honorably and in accord with his word. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and hungry, the homeless and unemployed and the oppressed, that the Lord would grant them mercy and that we may help to relieve their suffering and needs. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, that the Lord would grant them healing. For the wounded in spirit, that the Lord would make them whole. And for the grieving, that the Lord would comfort them, especially all affected by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and its effects. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have been entrusted with an abundance of gifts from the Lord, that they may cheerfully provide to the Lord their offerings with a grateful heart and give generously to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless our military. Keep them healthy and strong to protect our nation's people. We especially pray for Zion's sons and daughters who serve our country. Andrew, Ian, Patrick, and Paul. Keep them safe, faithful, and strong. Let us pray to the Lord. For the dying, that they may soon find everlasting peace with you. And for our grateful remembrance of all those who have died in Christ, that in the fullness of time, the Lord may bring us with them into his everlasting presence, where sin and death will trouble us no more. Let us pray to the Lord. God, hear our prayers. Bless us to carry out your work with love toward one another. In this we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us. We offer ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And in the words that Jesus gave us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his eternal peace and joy. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you.